Hey, good morning, everybody, and rise and shine. It is so good to be back with you. The last time you uh, heard, uh, not from me, but from PK about me, I was actually uh, on my way to the hospital uh, with chest pains. And um, we're still trying to figure out what's going on with, uh, with my heart and my lungs, but um, I'm here kicking kicking and, uh, and ready to, to keep going. So um, I am anxious to get into the Word with you today. But before I do that, I want to thank you so much for your prayers and uh, ask you if you wouldn't continue praying. Um, that really means the world to me to know that, um, that you're praying for me. So I do appreciate that. And um, I want to talk today about Paul and Silas. Now, we know that Paul, Paul wrote the majority, probably two-thirds of the New Testament, and never had the opportunity to meet Christ. He, um, he became saved after Christ was crucified and, and risen. So what we're going to do is delve into the book of Acts today, chapter 16, and um, we're going to talk about a time that Paul and Silas ended up in prison. But they ended up in prison only after they were stripped naked and beaten oh so badly. Now, if you start, if you go back and read this, you'll see what leads up to this, starting with verse 16. Um, I'm not going to take the time to read that portion of what led up to them being in prison, because I'm more concerned today about sharing with you about what happened when they were in prison. So, <clears throat> excuse me, they are, um, they are told that they're going to be kept in prison and the jailer is threatened with death if they escape. So the jailer decides that he's going to put them in the innermost section of the prison. And to make extra sure, he's going to shackle their feet right there. Now, I'm sure that you have been in a brick building during the winter or even during the, the summer. They're great during the summer because they really hold the, the coolness of the night air. Well, think about the prison walls and then the innermost portion of the prison. Cold. Cold and damp more than likely. They've been beaten badly. They've been stripped naked. They may or may not have been given their clothes back. And um, they were beaten with wooden rods. So they're covered in welts. They're covered with, uh, with lacerations, with cuts. And then they're in the dark. They're together, but they're in the dark. <clears throat> Think about that for a minute. They're cold. They're on the, a cold floor. They're shackled. And they're probably thinking, this is it. I wonder how many times you and I have thought, this is it. This is it. I'm going home to be with the Lord. I wasn't quite sure what was going on the, the evening that I went uh, by ambulance to the hospital, but um, I wasn't quite thinking this is it, but it was, it was scary. And you have to wonder what they were thinking. Now, if you haven't if you're not in that situation right now where you're facing something that is really, really scary, chances are that you just came through something that was terribly scary and you've come through it by the grace of God. And if you're not in something, then you're on the other side. You're about to go through something because that's life. That's how God teaches us. That's how we learn to trust in God. 
is when God allows certain things to happen. God doesn't cause things to happen. A lot of times we end up in these situations because of the things that we have done. We have free will. And God won't stop us from doing things that may indeed hurt us. But Paul and Silas were about God's business. They were out sharing the good news, the gospel. And here they are. They end up in prison. I wonder if Paul and Silas weren't thinking, this isn't what I signed up for. Hmm. I wonder if we're sharing God's word and, and we're laughed at or ridiculed or we're just so afraid to share God's word. The gospel, the gospel, it means the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. So I wonder what they were thinking. Can you imagine Paul and Silas laying there and all of a sudden Paul starts singing. What can wash away my sin? And Silas looks over at him and goes, what are you doing? Paul says, I'm praising God. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And Silas says, you are crazy, man. Why? Here we are in prison and you're praising God? No, I don't think so. I wonder if that's what Silas thought. I don't think so. I see both of them both of them singing around midnight verse 25 around midnight as Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to the Lord they were both singing what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Can you imagine the other prisoners barely being able to hear them? What can wash away my sin? What's that? What are they singing? What are, what are they singing? And they're listening really hard. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Because it's through a cement wall. And the other prisoners are listening. And by doing this, Paul and Silas are encouraging each other. They know that that jailer can hear them. How oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Now, of course, this hymn was not written back then. So they were singing something, but they were praising and praying to God. They were encouraging everything because when it seems the worst, that's when you need to praise God. Whatever way is your way, my way is by singing. If your way is, is just praying, praying out loud. Maybe it's talking to someone, telling someone about Jesus putting on music. You don't have to sing if you can't, if you feel you can't sing. God tells us to make a joyful noise, but listening, listening and praising Jesus. And what happened? And the other prisoners were listening. Verse 23, excuse me, verse 25 and verse 26. Suddenly there was a great earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Why? Because my friend, there is power in prayer. There is power in praise. There is power in being in unity with Christ. 
What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. They were praising God. And God created an earthquake because the Holy Spirit was right there with them. God created this earthquake. The prison was shaken to its foundations. And all the doors flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer wakened to see the doors wide open and assuming that all the prisoners had, had escaped, he drew his sword to kill himself. Because remember, he was told that if these prisoners escape, you will die. And where he was sleeping... This tells me that where he was sleeping was very, very close, if not right outside the door where Paul and Silas was. So you know that the jailer also heard Paul and Silas singing and praising. So he wakes up and he, he draws his sword about to kill himself. And Paul yelled to him in verse 28, don't do it. We are here. He's telling the, the jailer that even though they had the opportunity to get up and run away, they stayed right there because they knew that that was their mission field. That's where God wanted them, right there. And what happens next? He said, trembling with fear, the jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and begged them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He has now firsthand witnessed the power of God, the power in prayer, the power in praise. When you're up against something, and you just don't know which way to turn, that's when you praise. You praise through prayer. You praise through song. You praise through listening to songs. You praise through listening to sermons. You praise by listening to Rise and Shine. Go back and listen to some former, some earlier ones. You praise God when you have nothing else to do, when you have nowhere else to go. You praise God, and God will get you through that situation. He will do it. He's doing it for me. He did it for Paul and Silas, and he will do it for you. If you praise when you're facing that wall, and the mountain just seems so tall that you can't get over it, don't do it yourself. Don't do it yourself. Praise God. Read the word of God. Read it out loud. Turn it into a prayer. Read the Psalms. Call a friend, a Christian friend. Have them pray with you. And you will feel the earth shake underneath you. And your chains that are holding you will let go. They will. They may not let go right away, but they will let go. I know God is working on me. He's teaching me. And I know that the things that are holding me down right now is me not, not totally turning and praising him. Because there were times when I just, I feel so weak and I wonder why. That's when you need to praise God. So we're going to sing this together. Let me grab this. We're going to sing this together. We're going to, and I, I am, uh, I don't want to make the assumption that you know this song. Um, but we're going to sing, What Can Wash Away My Sin? And we're only going to do one verse because I want you to keep that verse in your head. We're going to do that verse and the chorus. What can wash away my sin? 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's do that first verse again. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but So when you, <coughs> excuse me, when you feel like you are bound by those shackles, that's when you praise God. That's when you reach out and say, Abba, Father, I need you and I need you now. I need you to help me now to calm my nerves, to help me to come through the situation. Praise God, when you're experiencing anxiousness, depression because of the situation, or maybe that is something that you're experiencing, that you experience regardless, praise God. He will bring you through. He will lighten your heart and he will touch you and allow you to feel his arms just, just embracing him. Praise God when you're in those situations. Father, I thank you for each and every person that's listening today. And I pray that regardless of what situation they're in, that they would stop and praise you, Father. That they would know that you are in control and what they're going through right now, you're not surprised by it. You know what they're going through. And you're right there with them. Father, I thank you and I praise you for the power in your blood. I thank you for the power in your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the power in your very presence in our lives. I thank you and I praise you. In your son's holy name I pray. Amen. Now, if you would... As pastor likes to say, smash that like button. Let us know that you're out there so that we can be praying for you. We can be praying for you through whatever situation you're in right now. God bless you today. Have a great day. Be sure to share this so that someone else, someone you may not even know, can find a way to get through whatever is holding them shackled and bound by praising God. Thanks. Have a great day. I'll see you next time on Rise and Shine. Bye now.